Well, good day, nerds. I am back with the part three on the copper uh, spacing flying machine thingy I was making. I already finished this design like a week after that video. Like you can see, I placed the copper and the flying machine is going to go. I have simplified it a lot. It's like the fourth version or something like that. Uh, I was planning to add another row of pistons but then I realized I don't require to do that and this way I can preserve the size of the initial machine as you can see it's lot 10 and it's stacked next to each other like this uh, part which you are seeing the flying machine working right now is completely separate machine and it on top of which I'm right now is also a completely separate machine so you can stack it as much as you like and uh, now the copper is again in the part of flying machine and we can call it back the problem with this flying machine was i also mentioned in the last video we'll talk about that flying machine a bit later uh, that uh, if you have simulation chunk of four then you have to chunk align this machine otherwise it will be unloaded partly and if something is unloaded then flying machine can't go through there so this is why you require to chunk align it on simulation distance of 4. If you're playing on that, RAMs are generally in simulation distance of 4, unless they have changed it and I have no idea if they did. So that's a bit problematic if you have to chunk align this massive machine. And the piston is, the flying machine is back with the copper. Like it hasn't aged yet, but it's like 3 hours average time by the time you'll when you space the copper like that, then it's going to take three hours to fully uh, age. Meanwhile, I'll like look at this. There's four machines stacked here. I was using command blocks. I didn't do it, and that was mistake. I pressed the start button instead of the uh, call back button. Uh, I. <laughs> The copper didn't extend because that is controlled by the flying machine at the end. Oh well, the flying machine is coming back. So, yeah. I like this one more because it's much modular and you can see what's going on. Unlike the machine on the right, which works on simulation distance of 4, you don't require to chunk align it. Like this one. And if this machine is back, you can see this weathered copper. I was working on that machine and this much managed to weather. And point to note here is that the simulation distance of four, you will see that copper here is fully weathered, but the copper at the end is not fully weathered. Like we can see it over here. Uh, both of the flying machines are working fine. I think it would be, it will just work fine, doesn't create that much lag, I think. What I could have changed slightly is when the flying machine go uh, separates the copper block at the start, the, all of the piston extenders, the quote-unquote triple piston extenders, all fire at once. I can maybe change that somehow. That might create a lag spike or something. Like here, yeah. This part is controlled by the flying machine at the end. This piston extends, so the triple piston extends later. Because we restart the latches. Mm -hmm. uh, you can maybe add another flying machine at the end here when you call all the copper. Then you can take all of these 12 blocks and place it to your keyboard. Like I call other. And we start the flying machine. We are going to follow its path this time. This time two double piston extenders are going to extend. Quote unquote triple piston extenders because there is a sticky piston at the bottom. I didn't need triple piston extender here. It should be slightly more complicated. So I used a quote unquote triple piston extender. It's just a double piston extender with a single piston extender. As you can see here. The latches are on the top, like over here. 
just one turn into off state the other one turned into off state and now the flying machine is going to restart all the quote unquote triple person extenders as you can see and now we'll call back the flying machine from the button pressing this button I'll first remove the disk copper yeah because uh, it will run into push limit then you're required to manually sort out the flying machine that would be a bit problematic I'll clone the entire thing that should probably stop the flying machine in the middle because all of the observers fired whenever it clone for whatever reason is it stuck? it looks like it's stuck, yeah it's stuck over there the clone pot and this one is coming back <laughs> looks pretty cool now let's fix this, we first have to get rid of this push and piss limit from here and then we can go back and extend the piston here so it will start the cycle of flying machine there you go and all of the copper blocks are fully extended like I said uh, you require about three hours when copper blocks are spaced like that for them to fully weather and at the end of the day you can have another flying machine which will stack all of these coppers into another cuboid which you can farm later I'm going to assume pretty much no one is going to build that thing <laughs> uh, let's go to here here we have different type of design I came up with this is the first iteration so it's a bit messy I would say this is fully loaded in simulation distance of 4 as you can see we are picking copper blocks one by one. There are two flying machines here. This is a bit different. The thing here is... Uh, the part complicated here is that you have to push copper blocks back in the same position from where you pulled. Why is that not working? Huh, piston is here for whatever reason. Maybe I require to extend the uh, pulse extenders a bit. Yeah, this is not working at all. The problem with bedrock addition is uh, when you have something happening in the same tick, instead of having a particular order like you have in Java edition, uh, it order randomizes. So if you have something happening on the same tick, two things that are fighting in the same position, then one of them is randomly chosen to be the first to trigger whereas in java edition uh, the something along the direction is first triggered if you have a particular pulse and if you have longer pulse then something in different direction is triggered that way it's more predictable behavior here it's not so we, we require to slow down the machine a bit it doesn't really matter in this case let me i don't think the this is going to activate let me act try to power it with a piston first uh, observer it should pulse yeah it's pulsing I should extend repeater time that should work yep I have to go back and do that over there as well there you go now that shouldn't break test it for luck and yep I'll explain the reason of the observers you see on the top while they there in a bit well it's the same reason like I explained when something is happening at the same time then one of the stuff is activated not both they don't have particular order it's randomized so behavior is a bit uncertain every time you try to do something now I'll explain that by removing one of the observers first I'll explain this brown circuit uh, it powers here the thing is if you have seen the 
giant brown mushroom block form. It's very similar to that one, just we don't have a line of sticky piston and observers, we only one sticky piston and one normal piston. We just swap it like that. And then we have have to also extend it so the flying machine can fly further by powering that piston on the left that extends that <laughs> and then we have this I'll explain this a bit later in a bit <laughs> uh, I was trying to come up with fast design for T flip flop which is over here which you can see the powdered snow over there and it's not fast enough to activate before the flying machine uh, passes by so when it pushes the copper block at times it is immovable block and the entire thing gets stuck so to fix that we have these observers placed on the top and on the left they force the flying machine to activate anyway <laughs> uh. In the earlier iterations, I was trying to do something in a way it would detect it got stuck and then it will fire, which is a lot problematic. This hack was much better, I would say. So hopefully we can get that uh, immovable block stopping the flying machine effect right here. Yes, we got on the left one. And how about the right one? Also on the right one. So now I can explain how the observers bypass this. So you notice how this honey piston, uh, not honey piston, this honey blocks conveyor has piston right here. You power it to make sure there's room in front of us. So we're not at the piston push limit. And we power this one right here. And if there's room free in front of it, then the flying machine flies anyway. <laughs> this however doesn't affect when the flying machine is flying forward which is great because otherwise it would be even more head scratching moments like this took about eight hours to come up with this there were several designs before this and they were trying to detect that the flying machine got stuck which is a lot more problematic and it was a lot slower this is a lot faster we just brute force it we don't care that it's stuck or not <laughs> Then we have a uh, rising edge mono stable circuit right here to push the copper block in this back in the position. This way we can f like if we want to make it even more um, what is it called Ugh, not hard but even more cool looking then we can have the like here we are going to use like I was suggesting to push these coppers into a cuboid by using other flying machine in similar manner we can have another flying machine which will pull this piston not piston slime block and honey blocks up and then you can combine that into a cuboid somewhere <laughs> that would be a lot more complicated like this design particularly is not very friendly to make because there is a particular spacing here like there is four blocks and here is five blocks the reason exactly the same when you push the copper block up uh, it is immovable and honey blocks and slime blocks can slide over it now because it can slide over it that is problematic because if we're trying to push back the copper block in the same position from where we picked them up you can get in it, it can get into a different position where it will uh, be bad because the there would be already block present where the block needs to sit and it will push the entire honey or slime arrangement up that will break the entire machine like here as you can see there was one gap and in that gap that copper block sat if there was something else then the entire thing would be pushed up and it will break so that's why we did that now of course we can have flying machines here on both sides we have to first remove those observers because it's at the piston push limit so we can pull this by slightly up and then we can have another flying machine <laughs> that will uh, if we can if we'll stack this thing then you can pull off the copper blocks into a cuboid of 12 by 12 by 12 or even larger cuboid <laughs> 
uh, keyboard is the rectangle one cube there you go <laughs> yeah all keyboards are cube if I'm not wrong whatever well that's about it uh, not really <laughs> as I'm just showing here this size difference like this is a lot smaller and I'm talking uh, showing the that crying of uh, obsidian is unloaded when you're here I'm going to show it when it's unloaded in a bit like that crying obsidian is currently unloaded so if you don't chunk align it the uh, the flying machine will try to go through unloaded chunk and it can't go through that because it's an immovable stuff you can't push over there so the flying machine will get stuck and there's basically no room here to brute force like I did with that design of flying machine now as you can notice we don't have crying obsidian here that is because the crying obsidian is unloaded where we if we stand over here and use this command block I need to prove it to you I'll increase the length like 66 I'm going to change it to 67 so it will also include the crying obsidian there you go and now I'm going to power it and we should get message that you can't it's unloaded or something like that yeah, cannot access blocks outside of the world. 